Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to May's edition of the Estrian RIG webinar series. In today's presentation, we will be discussing our insights on the global jack-up market and how Aramco's recent RIG suspension announcements may change the outlook and forecasts from Estrian. Today's presentation will last approximately 30 minutes and will include some time for Q&A at the end. To ask a question, please use the Q&A box at the top panel of today's event window. Today's presenter is Matthew Donovan, head of the Estian's RIG market research team, uh, who is based in our Houston office. Today's presentation is being recorded and will be uploaded onto the Estian website uh, later this week. I would like now to, to invite Matthew to start today's presentation. Over to you, Matthew. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. And thank you all for joining us today for Aramco's rig suspensions shaping the future of the global jackup market. Disclaimer first. So starting off, we're going to look at the uh, global jackup supply overview. Uh, the chart on the left hand side of the screen shows global jackup supply by status. With 499 units, currently 72% of those are drilling or otherwise contracted worldwide. And a significant number of the 13% uh, of rigs that are currently warm stacked do have uh, contracts upcoming. To the right hand side of the screen, you'll see jack up supply by region, where you can see that the Middle East uh, is by far the largest area in terms of jack ups. Uh, with the Far East and Southeast Asia coming in second and third, but uh, well below the nearly 200 units found in the Middle East at this time. Going to look now at some recent trends in jack-up demand and utilisation. So in the jack-up market, utilisation had been trending generally upwards. What we've seen over the past two years is that increased demand in the Middle East drew a large number of jackups to the region. So we had rising demand there. It also boosted utilization globally as a lot of the excess capacity in other markets moved to the Middle East at the same time as demand also picked up slightly in some of those regions. And what we've seen is competitive contractor utilization for the global jackup fleet remain around 90% since early 2023. And total utilization was as high as 74% as of March of this year. As I mentioned earlier, the Middle East accounts for the majority of jack-up demand, particularly activity in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. What we've seen in recent months in April and May is that the number of active rigs and competitive utilization have dipped slightly in these months as contract suspensions began in Saudi Arabia. So Saudi, Ara Saudi Aramco, the state operator uh, for Saudi Arabia, is the largest single operator in the jack-up market. In January of this year, Aramco received a directive from the Ministry of Energy to maintain its maximum sustainable capacity for crude oil production at 12 million barrels per day, reversing a previous planned increase to 13 million barrels a day that was announced in March of 2020. So what we've seen is that uh, Aramco is now adjusting its uh, fleet to deal with this uh, reversal in uh, the increase in uh, maximum sustainable capacity. And that was what had fueled a lot of the uh, new rig contracts that Aramco signed over the last several years. In March of this year, Aramco CEO Amin Nasser announced plans to reduce the number of offshore rigs working on oil projects while increasing the rigs for gas projects. He stated that Aramco aimed to maintain over 300 rigs, including onshore and offshore rigs together, and shifting some of those towards natural gas projects. Aramco currently has around 75 jackups under contract, with another three slated to commence work soon. Two of those rigs are undergoing maintenance, while one is awaiting delivery at a yard in the Middle East. In April, Saudi Aramco began issuing contract suspensions of up to 12 months to units that were under contract. And a total of 22 jackups are known to be affected, with suspensions spread among drilling contractors including Ardis, Shelf Drilling, Kossel, Saipem, Arabian Drilling, Egyptian Drilling, Arrow Drilling and Boar Drilling. 
We have seen multiple suspensions already begin, while others are still under discussion and expected to begin later in 2024. So mentioned these are 12 suspensions of up to 12 months for these contracts, and the backlog on these is being preserved by adding suspension time back to the contract as an extension at the end once they restart work. However, we have seen at least one rig owner elected to terminate the contract rather than return to Aramco after the suspension. The remaining terms on some of these suspended contracts can vary from a few months to multiple years. Now, in response, we've seen rig owners have already begun marketing these jackups globally, with three already securing long-term contracts. However, the additional availability and uncertainty in the global jackup market has resulted in some lower rates fixed recently. And as part of these suspensions, I should note that jackups that secure new work in other areas are given the, op the option to complete any of these new contracts and associated options before returning to work with Aramco. And you turn to the charts on the right of the screen, you can see the uh, companies impacted by the current suspensions and the number of rigs that were suspended, and also the percentage of rigs suspended by rig manager that were all under contract to Aramco. So Costal had 44% of its rigs under contract to Aramco suspended, as did shelf drilling and Saipem close at 43%. While Ardis, which had five units suspended, represents around 15% of their units under contract to Aramco. Moving ahead with a look at some of the units being suspended. Um, while we're expecting some of these units to uh, become active in the global market, not every jackup may be suitable for work in every other region. There'll be some challenges for drilling contractors who wish to market their rigs outside of Saudi Arabia. These can include country regulations, technical requirements, and the age of the drilling unit. And indeed, some contractors may have to work to expand beyond the market they are currently focused on. If you're talking about rigs moving to another region, the jackup specifications must align with the requirements of that new region, including water depth and weather, pattern, weather patterns. Modifications or upgrades may be necessary for some units to ensure compliance with local regulations and operating conditions. And securing a contract in a new region, of course, depends on market demand, competition and economic factors. Each region has its own set of regulatory requirements governing drilling operations. Now, we estimate that of the 22 suspended rigs, around 15 of those are likely to be competitive into the international market. And some of the uh, remaining of those units may uh, instead await their suspensions in uh, Saudi Arabia or perhaps bid for similar work in other parts of the Middle East. We've uh, broken down these suspended units to the right of the screen by their design and by the age. So you can see that the majority of the units that were suspended were uh, Gusto MSC CJ46 or KFELS B class. And a number of the units, uh, while well, a number of the units are relatively new rigs delivered in the past decade, we had several quite uh, old units uh, that were suspended. Now, the working life of a jackup can easily reach over 40 years. So uh, some of these rigs do have uh, work, uh, a working life ahead of them, but they may be less competitive on the global market due to operator preference for newer rigs. This is a look at rig designs per region of units currently drilling. We can see preference for certain uh, designs within regions. And what we've seen is that suspended rigs are already beginning to move outside Saudi Arabia. Ardes was awarded an 18 month drilling contract in the Gulf of Thailand from PTTP, marking its entry into its ninth country of operations. And subsequently, Artis has also secured a new contract for a one year firm term in Qatar with optional extensions of up to 18 months. Uh, they have also been awarded a 20 month, month drilling contract in Egypt. So with three out of the suspended unit, total 22 suspended units have already secured work elsewhere. Multiple units are already being marketed internationally, and several of the affected drilling contractors already have a significant international presence. 
It is understood that one Saipem jackup will relocate likely to Mexico, where it will take over a contract currently fulfilled by a jackup that Saipem has bareboat chartered. Now, given the high costs of mobilization, demobilization, and the potential for new contracts to be for terms longer than 12 months, some jackups may not return to Saudi Arabia at the end of this, so they could uh, elect to terminate their remaining uh, contract. And there are units that are more suited to the Middle Eastern markets. They may instead bid on work in other parts of the region or remain uh, suspended until resuming work with Aramco. And we do know that some drilling contractors intend to use the suspension time uh, to let their rigs undergo maintenance and repair. Looking at our global utilization forecast, we are still expecting jack-up demand globally to pick up in 2025 after some near-term weakening as rigs come off contract with Saudi Aramco and bid on new jobs. Drilling contractors largely expect demand in other countries of the Middle East, in addition to the Indian Ocean, Southeast Asia and West Africa to absorb much of the excess supply of rigs suspended by Aramco. Uh, we currently have long-term tenders and pre-tenders open for work in countries including Qatar, Malaysia, India, Nigeria and Angola. And we expect global competitive utilisation to remain strong due to the pent-up demand in these other areas and the small number of suspended units in terms of global fleet size. The 22 units represent around 4.4% of the total global fleet. So we are expecting uh, a significant number of those to secure work in other areas going forward. Now, in a longer term frame, the possibility remains that Aramco could suspend further rigs or terminate contracts towards the end of the suspension periods rather than resume work. However, this is mitigated by the state oil company's plans to increase gas production, which will allow some rigs to be redeployed uh, to that work, and also the work needed to maintain the uh, 12 million barrels per day uh, maximum sustainable capacity levels. So we are expecting uh, demand by 2025 to have picked up again. Looking at our global jack-up day rate forecast, we are projecting some near-term flatness in rates as we go forward. And as as drilling contractors work to secure additional contracts in a short time frame, we've seen some jack-up contracts fixed at the lower end of recent day rate ranges. However, other recent fixtures have remained close to the leading edge of day rates that were achieved in early 2024. So the increased availability and market uncertainty in the near term expected to cause some flattening in jack-up day rates. As that excess capacity is absorbed, we expect jack-up rates to begin rising again due to the overall strong utilisation and general limited supply globally. So by 2025, we should expect to see some increases in uh, jack-up day rates. And we'll turn now to some other regions. Um, we're expecting demand in Southeast Asia and India to draw some more jackups in. That's been Southeast Asia has been identified by several drilling contractors as a potential market for the suspended rigs to secure work. And the weather conditions and water depths mean that many jackups in the Middle Eastern market could be certain, suited for work in parts of Southeast Asia. As I mentioned earlier, Ardis has already secured an 18-month contract for one of their units that was suspended with PTTP Offshore Thailand. And they have cited an existing vacuum in very attractive Southeastern Asian, Southeast Asian markets as a potential place for their rigs to move. We're seeing long-term jackrup requirements in Thailand, Malaysia and Indonesia with start dates in late 24 and into 2025. And outside Southeast Asia, India is also an important jack-up market that could potentially bring in rigs. ONGC has had an open tender for four jack-ups, though many of these are likely to go to incumbent rigs, and the company recently cancelled a three-year tender for an HPHT uh, unit. There's currently also an Oil India tender in progress, and market sources indicate that can oil and gas can Oil and Gas India will issue a letter of award for two jackups in the near future. Moving now to West Africa, we are expecting jackup demand to rise in West Africa. There are currently long term opportunities for jackups in Nigeria, Angola, and Equatorial Guinea, and also shorter term jobs possible in areas including Ghana, Cameroon, and the Congo. 
This potential work includes exploration development drilling, as well as boosting production from mature assets. And we've seen that drilling contractors with suspended rigs, including shelf drilling and bore drilling, already have extensive operations in West Africa. Recently, Valaris fixed a jack up to a 13 well contract in Angola. And this unit will be mobilizing from the US Gulf of Mexico for this job, which indicates a general willingness to move rigs into West Africa for work. Also worth mentioning that many smaller operators in West Africa are very sensitive to price escalations in terms of day rates. So a near term increase in availability could provide some opportunities for these companies to uh, work on projects that would not otherwise go ahead if they were bidding at higher day rates. Get the North Sea. The North Sea market is unlikely to be significantly affected by the situation in the Middle East. This is because the North Sea market requires harsh environment jackups, so the rigs released by Saudi Aramco are very unlikely to move to the North Sea for work. What we have seen in recent years, jackups have left the North Sea for other regions, including West Africa, Southeast Asia, Oceania, and Latin America. And suspended rigs from uh, from the Middle East finding work in other regions could reduce future movement of jackups from the North Sea. With the recent departure of two jackups, the fleet in the North Sea and the Russian Arctic is down to 34 jackups. And this reduced supply and increased contracting uh, in recent quarters has resulted in a tight market with limited availability in the near term. Momentum in the North Sea jackup market picked up in late 2023 and early 2024, with around eight years of backlog added in 2024 to date. And we've seen competitive contracted utilization in the North Sea jackup market has been around 90% over the last four months. We're expecting demand in Norway to remain stable, with all eight units in the region currently firm through 2025. And the remaining active UK fleet is sold out through 2024, with several rigs transitioning to higher rates during the year, and around half of the UK fleet contracted into mid-2025. Looking now at some key takeaways from uh, this presentation today. Mentioned Saudi Aramco is suspending contracts for 22 jackups. These current suspensions last up to 12 months. Suspended jackups are already being marketed and securing work in other regions. Uh, although we do expect around uh, half of the units to likely remain in the Middle East. Middle East, even with the suspensions, remains the primary market for jackups, but we are expecting uh, Contract, contractors are expecting demand in West Africa, India and Southeast Asia to absorb much of the additional excess supply in the jack-up market by 2025. We're expecting global demand and utilisation for jack-ups to remain high over the coming years. But we do expect day rates to be flat in the near term due to that availability in the global market. All right, it's been a presentation day, so I believe now we have some time for uh, questions from the audience. Thanks, Matthew. Um, again, if anybody's got any questions, please use the Q and A box at the the top of the uh, the top of the screen. Um, we did get a couple of questions come in actually um, just very early on before the presentation started. On on the suspensions, have all of the suspensions actually begun at this time? Uh, no, not at this time, Paul. So several have already begun and we've seen rigs move into Anchorage in uh, parts of uh, Saudi Arabia and outside uh, the area in the Middle East. Uh, so those some have already begun, but there are some that are still under uh, discussion for the exact terms of the suspension and timing. And so what we're seeing is uh, probably most of those suspensions to uh, begin by uh, the end of the second or into the third quarter of 2024. So we're expecting most of these suspensions to begin by the end of this year, but not all have done so at this time. OK, um, you obviously showed quite a, a few detailed slides on sort of the regional demand broken down. But uh, one mm. question came in is, is, is there potential for increased jack up demand in the Americas? Well, if we look at the Americas as a whole, I mean, there is a uh, 
we are expecting at least one of the units that was suspended uh, to move to Mexico, where it will be replacing rather than uh, additional demand to it. But uh, in general, the Americas is quite a small market for uh, jackups. Uh, there's only a handful of jackups active in the US Gulf of Mexico uh, at this time. And as I mentioned, one of those has already secured work in West Africa and uh, will be leaving uh, for work uh, in, in West Africa in the near future. So unlikely to be additional rigs brought in uh, for the US Gulf of Mexico. Uh, there is some potential for rigs to go to uh, Central America or the Caribbean. Uh, South America, again, quite a small market for jackups. Uh, we've recently had a unit move from the uh, North Sea uh, to uh, Argentina for a project, a specific project there. And we've also seen uh, Petrobras is um, has tended for a jackup for PNA work. Uh, in Brazil, so that's a specific project there that could bring in, but it, in general, uh, not probably not one of the major regions for rigs to relocate to as compared to uh, Asia or Africa. That's the more likely market for uh, for jackups. at this time. Uh, I think, you know, the um, re really the sort of the, the major focus of, of uh, not just the units that are on suspension, but also any units that are available available in general has been the potential for increased demand in uh, Southeast Asia and uh, West Africa. As a bigger sort of uh, areas where potential growth could happen. Um, and I'll say in those regions, you know, a lot of excess, you know, when demand started to pick up in the Middle East, uh, a lot of rigs that were in other areas were brought very quickly to to the Middle East for work in, in Saudi Aramco. So utilization in uh, these other regions uh, really tightened up. So uh, there's, you know, now the possibility of some of those to move back there or or, you know, move to it move to another region and i think also you know there are a uh, around 17 jackups still under construction at this time so uh, also potential for some of those units as they deliver to enter the market in uh, southeast asia or beyond well likely some of these will some of the units under construction are being built in the far east and mainstead uh, work into the far eastern market There are uh, any further questions, Paul? There's a couple, sorry, there's a couple of more just coming through. Yeah. I know we've got a few, just a couple of minutes left before we, yeah, yeah. we, we sort of any questions. Um, there's one question there. Do you foresee uh, more than 22 rigs being suspended? Is there more out there that we're hearing? That's the that's the number that's sort of been uh, been announced at this time. I mean, I think there is the, you know, depending, a lot of this is going to depend on how Saudi Aramco adjust going forward. Uh, they contract, they have a lot of rigs under contract. So, you know, there there is maybe the potential in coming years that we could see some more suspensions or possibly that, you know, at the end of this 12 months, uh, there is the possibility that Aramco may decide that they don't need to uh, uh, bring these rigs back into the market. So we could see a mix of... Uh, further suspensions or or terminations but uh at this time it's 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 kind of the list has come out at around 22 so you know further further act further uh suspensions would you know uh, that'd be speculative this time but certainly possible okay um just picking on day rates we had a few comments and questions yeah. coming through about day rates so our forecast is flattening and then expecting in, to increase in yeah so what we've yeah we've, we've we're seeing some near-term flattening um basically as uh you know just as a, a an unexpected boost in availability and also uh contractors working hard to secure uh secure contracts uh, for the units that have come up, you know, unexpectedly available. So they're working to sort of secure market share on those. So we've seen a little bit of a some lower day rates and also market uncertainty tends to um, 
halt uh, upward movement in day rates slightly. So I think we'll see a little bit of effect of that this continuing this year. But in general, there's quite high utilization still and a lot of demand out there for a fairly limited supply of, of uh, jackups. So uh, I think we should expect to see uh, rates start to pick up again, uh, you know, sort of 2025. Okay. Interesting question around sort of the, the Aramco and their controlling of the market. Do you think drilling contractors, how they will perceive the suspension going forward that they will be sort of more reluctant to, to, to offer work into the Middle East or stay away from Aramco tenders in the future? Um, or just Ar I, I Aramco is too big a player. I think that's 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 a very large, uh, you know, that's a very large portion of the market. And I don't think anybody's going to uh, put off, you know, being in that. What I think you, instead you might see is that some companies may be, this may be an impetus to uh, expand uh, their businesses rather than uh, rather than shunning a rather than shunning a, a large market. So I think it's more that you know, uh, it might see a bit of diversification. Uh, in where companies have their fleets. Um, multiple drilling contractors already work in, you know, many, many regions around the around the globe. And uh, I think maybe perhaps you'll see some Middle East focused ones continue to expand uh, their presence globally. Okay. Rather than anybody um, staying away from uh, from uh, Aramco in, in general, that, that seems unlikely. Okay. So, so our, our summary is uh, we, we believe this is a short, short term blip in the market for utilization day rates and we expect the market to return to uh, early I think, 2025 is that uh, well I, th I think by 2025 we should start to see yeah we should start seeing much of the uh, excess supply absorbed uh, by 2025 um, you know and, and then so we'll and then we'll see utilization um, remain solid going forward. Okay. Well, I'm conscious of the time now that we're coming there. We've, we've still got quite a lot of uh, questions. Um, what we will do for those people, unfortunately, we haven't got time to answer them all today, is we'll reach out directly um, to everybody. Um, we have had quite a lot of comments about today's presentation, obviously a topic that everybody's interested in. Mm. So what, we, what we'll also do this time, which is the first, is we, we'll also send out a document um, of, of the questions that are being asked and our answers. So rather than just to the individual, we'll send it to the whole audience so you can hear some more of our intake of what's going on. So um, again, that really concludes today's presentation. Um, I would like to thank everybody for attending. Uh, Matthew for Thank presenting you. some great, great, great information, some great insights. And um, as I mentioned earlier, this is being recorded and we will send the link out uh, in the next couple of days of the website where you can follow up on the information and then look forward to the uh, question and answer document we'll send out over the next couple of days. So again, thank you for everybody and uh, yeah. enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Thank Tom. you, everybody. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you.